the field of math gives us a lot of interesting patterns and series. And of those interesting series is one known as Fibonacci series. And in this tutorial, we'll understand what exactly is Fibonacci series. And we'll also be implementing Fibonacci series using our favorite language, which is Python. Now, before we go ahead, please do subscribe to Great Learning's YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you get a notification of our upcoming videos. Also, I'd like to inform you guys that we have launched a completely free platform called as Great Learning Academy, where you have access to free courses such as AI, cloud and digital marketing. You can check out the details in the description below. So what exactly is this Fibonacci series? Well, when maybe when you were in your high school or primary school, you would have come across this series. So let's actually see what it is. So in the Fibonacci series, you have your first two numbers fixed, which are zero and one. Now, after that, what happens in the Fibonacci series is when you add the first two numbers or the previous two numbers, you get the third number. As I've told you, the first two numbers are fixed, which are zero and one. Now, when you add zero and one, you will get the third number, which is one. After that, when you add 1 and 1, you will get the next number, which is 2. Then again, we follow the same pattern. If you add 2 and 1, you get 3. Again, when you add 3 and 2, you get 5. You add 5 and 3, you get 8. When you add 8 and 5, you get 13. And this is how the Fibonacci series progresses. So this is the simple concept behind the Fibonacci series. You add the first two numbers and you get the next number in this particular series. And this is all about Fibonacci series. There is nothing complicated about it. Now that we've understood what exactly is this Fibonacci series, let's go to Jupyter Notebook and implement this. So I've opened Jupyter Notebook and over here I will open a new Python notebook. And let me just give in a heading over here. I will name this as Fibonacci series over here and first of all what I'll do is I'll start off by creating a method or defining a method called as FIBO so I'll just write down def of FIBO and inside this I'll just given one parameter which is n so n will tell me how many numbers do I want to see in this Fibonacci series so if n is one then I will get one number if n is 2, I will get two numbers. If n is 3, I'll get three numbers. So that's, that is how we are defining this function. Now, going ahead, since as I've told you, the first two numbers are fixed. So what I'll do is I'll actually have two variables over here, a and b. And in the variable a, I will store the value 1. In the variable b, I will store the value 1 again. Now, why am I storing the same number in the, these two different variables? Well, as we progress in this, uh, in this particular code, you will understand this properly. So I've stored one in variable A. I've also stored one in variable B. Going ahead, as I've told you, if I would want to print only one number, we obviously know that the one number is zero. So here I will check that using if condition. So what I'll do is I will write if n is equal to 1. That is, if I would want to see only the first number in the Fibonacci series, then we all know what that first number is. So I'll just write down print 0. Then going ahead, what I'll do is I'll give an else if. So else if, so instead of let's say only the first number, if I would want to see the first two numbers, so here the condition would be L if n is double equal to 2. So if I would want to see the first two numbers, then we again know what those first two numbers are. The first number is 0. The second number is 1. And that is what we'll be printing out. Now, if you would want to see more than the first two numbers, then we would have to do something interesting. So this is where our else condition starts. And in this else condition, 
we will be basically iterating through the numbers. So we will be using an iterative approach using the for loop. So let me just print it over here. What I'll do is I will write down Fibonacci series using iterative approach. And this is what will initially print. Now, after this, we need the first two numbers, which are obviously fixed. So what I'll do is I will print zero. So zero is a first number. And now after zero, a second number is one. So I will also print a over here. Then after this, we also know our third number because our third number is one, because when you add zero and one, it is one and that will be our third number. So I have zero A and B printed. Now after this, I want all of these to be printed with a space. So end of this will be with a space. So end I'll just give in a space over here. Then I will go ahead and start a for loop. And in this for loop, I'll write down for I in range of N minus three. Now this is something interesting. Why have I given n minus three over here? So let's say if I would want to have a look at the first six numbers, then I know that my first three numbers are fixed, which are zero, one, and one. So zero I'm printing over here, one and one. So one is stored in A, that is what I'm printing. Again, one is stored in B, that is what I'm printing. So my first three numbers are fixed and I'm printing them out. After that, so when I say n minus three, I would have to print three more numbers, isn't it? Because if the n value is six, so three numbers are fixed, then I need to print three more and that will give me six numbers in total. So that is what I've given n minus three. So let's say instead of six, maybe I would want 10 numbers. So if I would want 10 numbers, then again, my first three numbers are fixed. So again, since my first three numbers are fixed, so here it will be n minus three. So when I say n minus three, this time it will be equal to seven. So this loop will run seven times. And that is how this for loop is working. Now, when I come inside this loop, I'll give my first line of code over here, which is total is equal to a plus b. Then going ahead, I will store a inside b then I will store total inside A and then I will finally print out total and I would want to end this with a space. So let's understand this logic properly. What is actually happening? So if N is equal to let's say five. So if we take the value of N is equal to five, this condition is evaluated to false. Then we check this is n equal to five. No, this is also evaluate to false. Then we come inside this L statement. We print out Fibonacci series using iterative approach. Then we print out zero, one, one, and then we give a space. After that, this for loop starts. And in this for loop, we would have to print two more numbers because five minus three is two. So this for loop will go two more times. And inside this, you're seeing that total is equal to a plus b. So total is equal to a plus b. So a plus b is two. So we have two stored in total. And now we go ahead. We are storing the value of a and b. So one is there in a and I'm storing back one in b. So we have one in b. Then we will go ahead and we'll store the value of total in a. We have two in total and I am storing two in A. So I'll repeat this logic. So here A plus B one plus one becomes two and we store the value of two inside total. Going ahead, I have B is equal to A. So I'm storing the value of one in B. Then A is equal to total. So here I have two stored in A. Then I go ahead and print out total. So what is there in total? In total we have two, isn't it? So now after this, I'll be printing out zero, one, one, and two, and then I'll give a space. Then since this for loop goes one more time, I'll again enter this for loop. This time total is equal to a plus b. And when I enter the for loop second time, the value of a is equal to 
2 and value of b is equal to 1. So now when I say a plus b it will be 2 plus 1 and we will be storing the value of 3 inside total. Then going ahead I will store the value of a in b. So I have 2 in a when I store and I am storing 2 in b now so I have 2 in b. Then I will go ahead and store total in a. So what do I have in total? I have 3 and I go ahead and store 3 in a. And total I obviously have 3 so I go ahead and print out 3 and this is how I have my fifth number. So now I have finally printed out 0, 1, 1, 2 and 3. Now let's say instead of 5 the number were 6. Then the loop will go one more time and this time in A we have the value 3 and in B we have the value 2. So 3 plus 2 becomes 5 and you store that value in total. Then again you have 3 in A, you store that in B and again you have 5 in total, you store that in A. And since I have 5 in total that is what I will be printing. So here your sixth number will become 5. So here it will be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. And this is how we are working with this Fibonacci series using this, uh, using this FIBO method which we have just created. So let me just run this right now. We have successfully created our method called as FIBO. Now I will invoke this FIBO method and let's say if I given 5 inside this and if I hit on run, so you see that we have printed out Fibonacci series using iterative approach and I have printed out the first 5 numbers. So you have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. Now let's say if I would want to see the first 10 numbers, I will write down FIBO 10 and you see that I have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And obviously when you are adding them, you will get the next number. So here if we see 21 plus 13 gives you 34. Now let's say if I given FIBO 1, we are getting 0 because that is our first number. If we given FIBO 2, we get 0 and 1. If we given FIBO 3, we get 0, 1 and 1. And this is how we are working with this Fibonacci series. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on Fibonacci series in Python. Thank you very much and have a great learning ahead.